This is the Dollamore Daily, and I'm Jesse Dollamore. Yesterday, I did a relatively lengthy breakdown about this intelligence community whistleblower and Donald Trump's reported extortion scheme involving the attempted withholding of a quarter of a billion dollars worth of military aid to Ukraine. And if you need to get caught up on the ins and the outs of the story, check it out. Well, I finished that breakdown by saying the only thing that is truly in question is what are the Democrats in the House going to do about this? And that, with Nancy Pelosi, who seems inexplicably impeachment-averse, we may have to go shopping for a new speaker before we do a new president. And that is what I want to discuss today. You see, Donald Trump has time and time and time again betrayed his nation and her people, turned his back on his sacred oath to faithfully execute the office of the President of the United States and to preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. What officially put me in the impeachment camp was when we watched him thousands of miles from home and shoulder to shoulder with Russia's Vladimir Putin, the very man who attacked and continues to attack our democracy. And we watched him take his side over that of America. Just now, President Putin denied having anything to do with the election interference in 2016. Every U.S. intelligence agency has concluded that Russia did. What, who, my first question for you, sir, is who do you believe? My second question is, would you now, with the whole world watching, tell President Putin, would you denounce what happened in 2016, and would you warn him to never do it again? So all I can do is ask the question. My people came to me, Dan Coates came to me, and some others, they said they think it's Russia. Uh, I have uh, President Putin. Uh, he just said it's not Russia. I will say this. I don't see any reason why it would be. What Trump is saying there is that he doesn't believe the hardworking, patriotic, career intelligence officials in the United States who have dedicated their lives to keeping us safe from the very threats Putin and Russia pose. He believes Vladimir Putin, a man who murders political opponents, journalists, and has labored to disrupt Western relationships and alliances more than any other person in the 21st century. The list of other impeachable offenses is long and filled with similar instances of disloyalty, immorality, serious ethical breaches, outright fraud, self-dealing, naked corruption, and flagrant violations of the Constitution of the United States which all comfortably fit into the category of high crimes and misdemeanors, the benchmark for impeachment under Article 2, Section 4 of our Constitution. From campaign finance fraud to emoluments clause violations to human rights abuses to weakening the constitutionally protected free press to whipping up hate and violence within the ranks of his white supremacist, white nationalist base of supporters, Donald Trump hasn't just lightly scratched the surface of a single reason to consider impeachment. His entire presidency is built upon a firm yet growing foundation of innumerable justifications, increasingly urgent justifications for his removal from office. And at every step, after each violation of law and time-tested institutional custom, Republicans have remained silent. Any whispers of displeasure that they may have uttered while hiding under their desks were drowned out by a chorus of crickets. Republicans have traded away what little credibility they had left. It seems that Republicans think that our nation is a sinking ship and the only way to save themselves is to toss overboard that which they deem to weigh them down. Patriotism, duty, honor, loyalty to country before loyalty to party. All of it has been jettisoned in service to cowering in servility, like beaten, broken dogs before their master, Donald Trump. That is almost completely to be expected, though, from Republicans. That is one of many reasons that I don't count myself among their numbers any longer. 
While disappointed that there is no pushback from the GOP against this civic virus that is Donald Trump, I don't have high expectations for them. My question is, where are the Democrats? Namely, Nancy Pelosi. Since impeachment must begin in the House of Representatives, her decision, or indecision rather, matters. In fact, let's go through a few clips of the evolution of her ignoring and diverting from the issue of impeaching and removing Donald Trump from office. You said, you said in, in your comments that were reported this week about uh, impeaching the president just isn't worth it. But if the Mueller report comes back and suggests criminal activity in the White House, could you change your mind? Well, it's a question of when I say what isn't worth our time. Forty uh, percent of the American people cannot withstand a $500 surprise expense, be it their water heater or their carburetor or whatever it happens to be. <clears throat> Our focus was on what we said we would do. Health care, job creation, cleaner government, gun safety, issues like that. And it is not worth our time to take our attention from that. And if I'm somebody in the public who is feeling that financial pain, and I see us focusing on one thing and another, but not on my financial interest, uh, that's, that is not a source of hope for people. If the Mueller report comes back with information, I don't think we should impeach a president for political reasons, and I don't think we should not impeach a president for political reasons. Right. Not worth their time. Acting honorably and in the best interest of the country isn't worth your time. And thanks for that courageous little ditty at the end there. We shouldn't impeach a president for political reasons, and we shouldn't not impeach a president for political reasons. That is uh, gold star stuff there, Madam Speaker. Mwah! Magnifique. Some of your Democratic colleagues believe you're simply trying to run out the clock on impeachment. Are you trying That's to run out the true. clock? No, I'm not trying to run out the clock. Let's get sophisticated about this, okay? <laughs> okay. For how long would that be? Will take? We will proceed when we have what we need to proceed, not one day sooner. And everybody has the liberty and the luxury to espouse their own position and to criticize me for trying to go down the path in the most determined, positive way. Let's get sophisticated. Why are you treating the intelligent, seasoned, and professional journalists in the room like they're a bunch of MAGA-hatted rubes? And let me exert the liberty and luxury of my criticism of you when I say that we've had what we've needed to proceed with impeachment since Helsinki. On the other topic of the day, impeachment, do you agree, do you concede now that an impeachment inquiry into President Trump is underway? Do I concede now? Have you not paid attention to what we've been talking about? For months, we've been saying we're doing three things. But so legislate, language? investigate, litigate. That's the path we have been on, and that's the path we continue to be on. If I may, is this specific language not important? I mean, how should the American people understand the American the work people of this committee understand when the members are speaking very differently about it? It's not, uh, you're the only ones who are uh, sowing this. Uh, That's not true, man. It, it, it isn't true. The, uh, look, I travel the entire country. Yeah, come with me sometime and you'll hear what the American people are saying. Look, absolutely no one is beguiled by the little three word rhyme, legislating, investigating, litigating. And, and I hate to break it to you, Speaker Pelosi, but there are plenty plenty of Americans all across this great nation of ours who are waiting with increasing impatience, might I add, for you to drop the pretenses to political strategy and start acting in the best interest of our republic. Every single day, whether it's obstruction, 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 obstruction of having uh, people come to the table with facts, ignoring subpoenas and the rest, every single day, the president is making a case He's, he's becoming self-impeachable. Look, I don't hate Speaker Pelosi. There is a lot, a lot, 
to admire about her and her accomplishments. I am making legitimate criticisms about her leadership and judgment during this very important chapter in our country's history. I mean, it would be one thing if she and I just held different opinions about the reprehensible conduct of dumb guy Donald. That isn't the fact, though. Speaker Pelosi agrees with me. In fact, here she is with maybe even stronger language than me about Trump's treason in Helsinki. The entire world witnessed President Trump cower in the presence of Putin. I sadly beseech President Trump to apologize to the American people for the, his disgraceful, dangerous, and damaging behavior with Putin in Helsinki. I call on my Republican colleagues in Congress to join Democrats in that request for an apology. President Trump obviously seemed frightened uh, in the presence of Putin. What was he afraid of? What is Putin blackmailing President Trump, Trump with, personally, politically, or financially? Whatever it is, it is a level of blackmail that the American people cannot afford. Putin appears to be President Trump's puppeteer. And that day in Helsinki, he shined the light on the strings. Trump demonstrated disgraceful, dangerous, and damaging behavior. Trump is being blackmailed, and he is Putin's puppet. Either she doesn't think that is impeachable, or she's not being serious and principled about this very real threat to our democracy. Yesterday, the president gave us once again evidence that he does not know right from wrong. I believe that he has been involved in a criminal cover-up. I've said that before, and our investigation is demonstrating that. The Mueller report showed obstruction of justice in ten, at least 10, perhaps 11 places. But for the president to be so cavalier to disregard, to be indifferent to law and any sense of ethics about who we are as a country to say he would invite foreign intervention further. The uh, intelligence community with uh, great confidence has put forth that the Russians interfered, interfered in our election. That's an assault on our democracy. An assault on our democracy. Trump doesn't know right from wrong. He's involved in a criminal cover-up. But let's not do anything. Let's ignore the fact that the power to impeach and remove this criminal who doesn't know right from wrong lies with you, in your hands, Madam Speaker. Every single member of this institution, Democratic and Republican, should join us in condemning the president's racist tweets. To do anything less would be a shocking rejection of our values and a shameful abdication Suspend. of our oath of office to protect the American people. And of course, what would any discussion of Donald Trump be without mention from the Speaker of the House of Representatives of the United States of America on the floor in official proceedings that he, the president, is a racist? But I guess that doesn't rise to the level of impeachable. Come on, Madam Speaker. You can't reasonably have it both ways. This is madness. You're standing around watching something precious die in a fire while simultaneously being the only person with a bucket of water. You can't be huffy and bothered when people get upset that you didn't put out the fire when you were the only one who could. I will leave you with the words of the conservative, Tom Nichols, who wrote the other day in The Atlantic about this latest in a long string of impeachable offenses related to Donald Trump's attempt at subverting our democracy when he tried to extort the president of Ukraine. There is no spin, no deflection, no alternative theory of the case that can get around the central fact that President Trump reportedly attempted to use his office for his own gain and that he put the foreign policy and the national security of the United States at risk while doing so. He ignored his duty as the commander in chief by intentionally trying to place an American citizen in jeopardy with the foreign government. He abandoned his obligations to the constitution by elevating his own interests over the national interest. By comparison, Watergate was a complicated judgment call. Look, it doesn't matter 
If every single Republican is a filthy coward who pitched their faithful allegiance to country overboard a long time ago, just because they are weak need patriots who've abandoned sacred obligation, integrity, and decency doesn't mean we must match them in such a fruitless and shameful pursuit. This ship isn't sinking. There are great things in store for those of us who care to create a better world for our neighbors and for ourselves. And I implore you, Madam Speaker, to join us taking that first step into that great future by impeaching Donald Trump.